So today I wanted to do a flip through of the Math Mammoth grade one. They do not have a kindergarten level for Math Mammoth. So you can start at grade one, but even on their website, they do advise that a kindergarten age child might not be ready for this because they do jump pretty quickly into things like missing add-ins. That's like two plus a blank equals three. And that they just might not be cognitively ready for that yet. So whether or not you can use this for kindergarten is going to depend on your child. But let's open it up and take a look. Uh, Math Mammoth is open and go. She does have some videos on her website for some subjects if your kids wanna watch her teach it. But usually if I'm having trouble with something, I just look up either hers or a quick YouTube video. So at the beginning, they're gonna lay out everything that's in the book. So it starts with some kindergarten math review, which is gonna be colors, shapes, patterns, writing numbers, that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna jump into addition. And this is more of a mastery type program meaning it's going to go really deep into a subject, and then there's not gonna be a lot of review of that subject later on. So, chapter one, addition within 10. Then you're going to jump into subtraction within 10. You'll be doing that for a while. You can see it's almost 40 pages, so it's a big section. Then you're gonna jump into place value, and that will be the end of the first book, there are two of these workbooks that make up one unit or one level. So she'll have a forward here that gives you some information. And this is the review chapter, so there's not the normal beginning thing. As you can see, we skipped some of this because my kids had mastered it. So let's do a walkthrough of this chapter one. So. Here's for the instructions, number of pages. These are some game ideas, resources, and then we get into the lessons. So this is basic addition. So it's gonna start with just the idea of separating numbers into two groups. As you can see, my kids have done this. I even erased some of it so that I could try it out with my younger daughter. Then you start using dice, which, you know, there's no manipulatives in this, but they are helping you to visualize it. We're using some fruit to make different numbers. And now we're gonna start introducing the plus sign and actually start learning the structure of a math equation, as you can probably tell here, I was writing the numbers for her so that she could concentrate on doing the math, which is totally okay if your kid is more ready to do the math than they are to do the writing. Again, now you're gonna practice it with these dice. Now we're gonna practice adding one some more or less, greater than or less than. Then you see how quickly we're getting into missing items or what is often called missing add-ins. So you're gonna see that you need to make a total of three. You have one and you have to figure out how many you need in your other group or on your other dice to make three. So the lesson part of the Math Mammoth curriculum is this right here. It's usually in a blue box at the beginning, and that's it. It's very short. It's just simply showing them what they're going to be doing, introducing an idea, and then they're gonna practice. Um, they do recommend that you don't have kids do all the problems on a page unless they're really struggling. They can do every other, they can do half, and then you can either use the other problems for review or go ahead and move on if they've really got the concept that you just don't need them to do every single question on these pages. 
So there's more practice here. So we practiced the missing add-ins for a while. Then you're gonna go back and do just some regular addition. We're gonna recognize some patterns in totals. Sums that add up to five. Sums with six. We're gonna jump into using a number line. So kids are gonna learn lots of different ways to add because this is mastery. So we're gonna learn lots of different techniques. So now we're gonna do number lines for a while. Sums with seven. Now we're gonna introduce some word problems, which kids tend to need a lot of practice on. Math Math also includes these little puzzle corners. So if the kids want a challenge, they can do this or you can skip it. Sums with eight. Adding mini numbers. So here we go. We're already adding three small numbers. More word problem practice. As you can see, we didn't use a lot of this because we didn't jump into Math Mammoth with my oldest until we had already covered addition. So we used a few of the little sections as review, but we didn't do all of it. And my younger daughter is at the very beginning of the book. So now we do more addition practice, sums with nine, even more word problems sums with 10. We're all still in this chapter on addition. We're going to do some more comparing quantities. And then here at the very end of the chapter, we are going to have a little bit of review. So you can see if there's anything they just completely don't get or have forgotten that you need to go back and review before you move on to the next chapter. So there's a few pages of review here and only then do you reach chapter two. So it is very in-depth on one topic, but it does move quickly through the different techniques. Um, that is something that my oldest daughter did not like about Math Mammoth. I personally think this is a wonderful curriculum if it works for your kid. And then we pick up with book 1B. And this is the light blue series, which is the US version of the curriculum. She also does have some books that are topic based if your kid just really needs extra practice on a certain topic. So 1B is going to cover some more addition and subtraction facts. Then we're going to go into time, shapes and measuring, adding and subtracting within 100, and then coins. And because each chapter does focus on a particular topic, you can do them out of order. There were times where my daughter just got tired of doing all this addition and subtraction work. So we would take a break and jump to something like time or coins. And we actually discovered that we needed to skip time altogether when my oldest was a first grader because she just was not grasping it yet. So we were able to just kind of put a pin in it and say, we'll come back to it. And when we came back around to it later, she was able to do it much better. So that is the nice thing about this mastery style curriculum is that you can just skip this whole chapter for now, but you're not going to be encountering it on review sheets like you might in a spiral curriculum. So the books follow the same format. So again, let's find the beginning of a chapter, shapes and measuring. So you've got the intro, how many pages per topic, and then your resources. This curriculum does not require any manipulatives 
other than they suggest using an abacus. Um, but I do have, you know, counters and number blocks that I pull out on my own and sometimes we'll use to demonstrate things. And then of course they have all these online games that you can play to reinforce skills as you go along. So that is Math Mammoth level one.